Hi, Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. Thank you for being here. I wanted to talk about an alignment that is coming up on the, it will be exact on the 19th of February, but we are very much in the energy already and will continue to be for some time after the 19th. And this is an alignment um, with the North Node in Aries and Chiron in Aries. And both these um, sort of, what should we call them, um, bodies are going to connect and meet up and align with each other on in an exact conjunction on the 19th of February at 16 degrees 45 minutes of Aries. Now Chiron is a very strong influence in my chart and certainly in my life and um, I have done videos about Chiron in Aries previously I will link to that um, because if you have Chiron in Aries in your chart you are going to be very aware of the different sort of ways in which it comes through and shows up. However, um, it is currently working through Aries for all of us. So although this is going to be stronger in terms of energetic influence for those with Chiron in Aries in their natal charts, particularly if you've got Air um, Chiron between 14 and 18 degrees of Aries, Mine is at 14, so this is a powerful one for me. Um, but, you know, it is, it's a collective transit. So this is something that we are going to experience collectively. Now, Chiron is our deepest wound. It is where we um, are, in some respects, broken, um, not whole, <laughs> certainly. And um, when we work with our wound, then we find our way back to becoming whole. And then we step into um, a kind of more healer role, being able to help other people. Now, the North Node represents our destiny, our forward sort of our future purpose, our future path, where our soul wants us to grow to help us with our evolution. So these two coming together is a really profound and um, very um, deep event, very deep aspect in our um, calendar year, in our astrological year for 2024. Now, I want to pull the energies apart a little bit to try and help you understand, um, you know, what's happening here. Now, obviously, the North Node is moving through Aries for all of us. This is a collective transit. It takes 18 months to move through the entire sign. It moves in reverse, in retrograde motion. And while the North Node is in Aries, the South Node is in the opposing sign of Libra. So we are being called to look at how we can step into more of ourselves, how we can be more sovereign with our energy and with who we are, how we can stand on our own two feet more, how we can take um, make ourselves accountable, take responsibility for ourselves and really, um, yeah, just become more of the self because Aries is about the self ultimately. The south node being in Libra, we are letting go of relationships that no longer serve us, where we have been codependent on things, on people, on situations, on systems that no longer serve us. You know, and again, it's all about um, supporting us to grow into more of who we are meant to be. When we have Chiron in Aries, now this is, um, it's a tricky one, it's challenging, you know, and I speak from personal experience. Chiron in Aries is the wound of the self, it's the wound of the identity. It sort of um, brings through um, this whole notion of, you know, do I have the right to exist? Who am I? It can be difficult to find yourself when you have Chiron in, in Aries. Um, it affects your self-confidence, your self-esteem, um, your willingness to sort of express your opinions, your ideas, to sort of show up and show and shine through who you are because it feels like there's something wrong with you, that you need to hide away, um, you know, and it also creates quite a strong disconnection between you and um, the physical body, you know, who you are as a person. Um, it is not easy to navigate, you know, it is very difficult 
if you have strong Chiron in Aries, to feel like you fit in, you feel like an outsider, you feel you're not good enough, um, you want to remain hidden and hide your sort of your true self away from others because you might feel embarrassed or that you just feel that, you know, people aren't going to like you if you show up and show who you are. Um, and, you know, there's a real kind of need and want to be liked and to be accepted by other people, which, of course, is a human sort of trait, you know, generally but it is much stronger with Chiron and Aries and because you want to be liked you end up sort of trying to people please more than maybe you should which involves you know then giving your power away because you're not honouring yourself um, and putting yourself first because you're trying to make sure everybody else is happy and feels comfortable and you know that or while that is very noble and um, ultimately if you keep doing that you then neglect yourself in the process so this is you know it is it's not an easy um it's not an easy um birth chart position to deal with there's a beautiful poem by marianne wilson which is a really famous one um and i just want to read it out because it feels so appropriate for chiron and aries and it goes our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure it is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Now that to me is absolutely bang on when it comes to this wound of not being enough and not wanting to shine and having to hide well, away. If you've got Chiron and Aries, you'll be probably nodding your head <laughs> and um, yeah, really, really strongly relatable. What's happening is that as the North Node comes round to meet Chiron, and obviously it's coming in um, backwards, if you like, so they're coming, they're meeting um, sort of head on as that happens there is going to be a big shift in the energy now the north node wants us to grow it wants us to evolve and when the north node is active it is all about pushing us out of our comfort zone because that is where the growth happens if we always sit with um you know if we always do what we've always done then it's difficult to um to expand and to change. The North Node is often um, quite scary. It's quite daunting. It can bring through energies and situations and um, experiences that we maybe feel that, you know, it's just too much that we're not, um, that, you know, it's out of our reach that we couldn't possibly achieve that. We, po we couldn't possibly get there. But actually, um, you know, it's where you really are taking a leap of faith, you're facing your fears and you're pushing yourself further than you really believe you can do. And often you find when that happens, that is where, you know, the the rewards and the gold are just, you know, beyond what you can imagine. So, you know, this is very much what the North Node is asking us to do. So the North Node is all about the lessons that we have to move through um, in order to fill our destiny and our purpose. And what we're talking about here is, as this is a collective transit, you know, it is about our collective destiny, the destiny of humanity, how we can step into more of what we are meant to be and who we came here to be. And with this conjunction, it is about taking the wound and the trauma um, of the self um, and using that to propel us forward. Now, this um, conjunction is likely to create a big shift in consciousness because it is about breaking a cycle. It is about a powerful reset, particularly with the Aries energy, which is about sort of setting out um, 
you know, on a new journey where you don't necessarily know where you're going, but you just have the faith, um, a bit like the fool's journey in the tarot. It's about having that faith that, you know, you will be supported and that you will get to where you need to go. There is quite um, sort of, it, it can feel a bit unsure. Um, it can feel, there can be trepidation with this um, journey, but ultimately Aries is the pioneer and Aries wants to take us into new ground, you know, un, um, un, untrodden ground, you know, where we've not been before. And it is about um, bringing something new in um, and really having the courage that is needed to, to do that and to, you know, um, sort of step out into the unknown. Um, Aries is very linked to the warrior. So um, with its ruling planet of Mars, you know, it can be aggressive in its lower expression, but it is also um, very excited and very driven, very motivated, you know, isn't necessarily going to sit around and think things through, just wants to get out there and on the move and sort of, you know, get into it. Um, there's a strong sense of leadership with Aries um, and also sovereignty, which again is coming through really strongly. It's about how can we step into a state where we are leading ourselves, where we are sovereign of ourselves. And, you know, how can we sort of claim the courage of Aries to be more of ourselves? And, you know, the poem by Marianne just expresses it so beautifully. When we step into more of who we are meant to be, that is where the light sort of shines. And, you know, that's where the activations happen. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of shadow work over the last week, which I feel is very much linked to this conjunction, especially as I am still in my Chiron return. So this is about really looking at sort of deep wounding and parts of me that I have rejected or disconnected from or separated from because I felt shame, because I've been um, disappointed or, in, you know, or even horrified and felt guilty. It's about bringing that back in so that it can become part of you again, because, you know, the shadow really is part of the light. It's just something that we're not really ready to or prepared to look at. But when we bring our shadow back in, and it's not about shining a light on it, it's about integrating it within, we become whole again because we are sort of accepting the parts of us that we had rejected or cut off um, from. So, you know, this is not work for the faint of heart, but it is hugely rewarding if we are prepared to do it. And this conjunction is going to really ask us to look at our wounds and to really see how we can use them to step into more fuller versions of ourselves, to claim ourselves back and to then propel us forward, you know, as we sort of move through this ascension journey. So it is sort of reclaiming the parts of us that we have locked away or hidden or rejected. Um, it's also recognising how, you know, a lot of the wounds that we carry are actually a portal to deep healing. And once we've healed ourselves, then we are able to heal others and help others and support others on that journey, because ultimately we're all here to come back to ourselves. Um, so, you know, recognising that the wound is actually wisdom sometimes in a slightly strange or challenging or painful package, but it is a key to unlocking your gifts. And, you know, it is about stepping into a bigger, just a more fuller version of, of you. So um, we are at a tipping point, and this is a really powerful event that is going to propel us forward. Um, but with the North Node, you know, there is discomfort. It is not an easy ride. It is asking you to do the work. And, you know, there could be something that happens that really does unite us all through the pain, through wounding, and um, through seeing, um, you know, who we truly are and how we truly fit into this world. It, it can manifest in many different ways. And astrology is not necessarily predictive in that way. It's just sort of introducing and exploring the energies that we're working with, um, which, um, yeah, kind of helps you to understand a bit more from a higher perspective what is going on. So beautiful 
deeply healing time for us all, but particularly if you are born between 1969 and 1977, you will be having your Chiron return. Um, if you haven't gone, th you will have gone through it recently or it will be coming up very soon. Um, so this is, you know, it's it is, it's, it's, oh, it's challenging, it's tricky, um, it's hard work, but the results and the rewards of doing that work are really um, worth it. And for me, just to give you a little bit um, of sort of personal input here and perspective, I have been looking for, you know, who I am, how I fit in, where I come from for a long, long, long time. And it was through discovering galactic astrology on literally the week of my first Chiron return that um, I was able to tap into and explore that and find out more about my heritage and who I am and why I'm here. And that was a huge gift and it sort of helped me understand more about myself. But through doing that, I've been able to take that gift and um, share it with others. So now as a practitioner and as a galactic astrologer, doing things like this, showing up, you know, pushing through resistance about not wanting to be seen, about being embarrassed, about worrying about judgment. What are people going to think? You know, will I get it right? Am I good enough? You know, how can I even compare, you know, to all these amazing people that are doing similar things? All those, all that chit to chatter, all those um blocks um you know coming up to be faced to be to sit with and to push through because ultimately that is what we are here to do and that is where the challenges come so that we can experience growth um so yeah it's been it's been an amazing journey and i know it's not over yet there's still stuff coming up you know almost on a daily basis at the moment but i am welcoming the opportunity because um you know, I know that when you do face things that make you feel uncomfortable um, or, you know, and face our deepest fears, ultimately, that, you know, it is it's worth it. It is so worth it. Um, and yeah, so that's my personal story. But if you've got this far, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> thank you for the comments. I really love to hear what people think. I'm sure there'll be lots of natal Chiron and Aries people watching this Um sort of you know nodding their heads um, <laughs> it's not an easy one but you know what you know we only um we we only get given what we can take and what we can deal with so in strongest of the strong and um yeah that's all from me take care thanks for watching <laughs>